Hey guys, it's Rachel from The Little Reading Lamb, and today I'm doing a tag. I'm doing the Reader's Problems tag, and this was created by Tiffany from About to Read, and I was also tagged by her, and I'm going to put her channel link in the down bar. You should definitely go check out her channel because she has really good book content, and I really enjoy her videos. And I'm just reading these off my laptop, which is on my lap, so if I'm looking down, that's what I'm looking at. The question Questions. number one is, you have 20,000 books on your TBR. How in the world do you decide what to read next? So if I had 20,000 books on my TBR... That'd be quite lengthy. Um, I'd probably decide how to read next by what I felt like. Like, if I felt like a contemporary, I would look over my contemporary, I guess, section. Um, I'd hope it'd be organized by TBR, but that'd be really crazy. But um, basically, I just pick whatever I feel like. Um, if I just look at a book on my shelf and I think the cover is nice, I read the description. Um, it's just really based on my mood. Two, you're halfway through a book and you're just not loving it. Do you quit or are you committed? So this happens every once in a while. Um, my most recent example is Scarlet by Marissa Meyer, which is a sequel to Cinder. I put it down, but I have my bookmark in it. If I have my bookmark in it, I'm still committed to it. It's just I'm putting it down for a while. I'm not quitting it. If I didn't, if I don't have my bookmark in it, that means I've kind of, you know, stopped being committed to it. Um, so it really matters on the book. And if it's a series, generally I'll stay committed. But if it's a standalone, I might try to read it a bit more, but typically I'll just quit it. Three, the end of the year is coming and you're so close, but so far away in your Goodreads reading challenge. Do you try to catch up and how? So last year, I don't really do the Goodreads reading challenge. I tried to set mine this year, but it was, it, how Goodreads counts. If I reread a book that's already on my Goodreads, it doesn't count, so it's kind of annoying for me. So I just basically do it by myself. Like I say, I'm going to read this. So my goal for the last few, well, the last two years has been 50 books. Before that, it's been like 100 stuff, and I really never hit it. I was very close. Last year, I managed to get 49 books out of 50 read, which was really disappointing. Um, but usually, I'll try to catch up, especially because I'm off school around December 20th, typically. So I have still like a few days left to really power through some books. Um, but I do try to catch up. But if I was way, way off, I probably wouldn't try to catch up. But my way of catching up is I'm not forcing myself to sit down and read forever. I just am more motivated to read to catch up to my goal. The four, the covers of a series you love do not match. How do you cope? So this mostly happens um, with me with book sizes, but the covers don't match. I, it's not a big deal for me as long as they look kind of similar. I don't like, for example, when it's like you have the first two Stephanie Perkins books and the Anna... Um, and in the French Kiss series, and then they have you have the third one that's a completely different color cover. I do not like that, but if they're kind of similar and you can see that they're part of the same book series, it's not a big deal for me. Um, I prefer them to match. I prefer them to be the same size and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I don't really care um, that much. But it's only if there's a complete cover change and the books look like completely different. But the only reason, the only way that I will be swayed otherwise is if I get a good deal on the book and it's a really good steal, then I will settle with different covers because I got a really good bargain. Um, five, everyone and their mother loves a book you really don't like. Who do you bond over shared feelings? So typically if I don't like a book, I I haven't read too many books I've absolutely hated in the past few years. I've been better with my book But if I do not like a book... Typically, I'll do a review and I'll say, like, this book isn't for me. This is for somebody who likes this because I don't want to completely bash the offer. So if I do not like this book, typically I look for YouTube um, to see if anybody else felt the same way. Or sometimes I go on to Goodreads and just read other people's reviews just to make sure, you know, I'm not the only one who felt this way. And, or, like, if I have a friend that's reading the book and didn't really like it. But I don't have a specific person or place I go to bond over shared feelings. Six, you're reading a book and you're about to start crying in public. How do you deal? So I very rarely cry when I read just because I don't. But if I was in public and I was about to cry, I'd probably maybe put the book down, um, calm down. And if I did have some tears, I'd maybe pretend to be laughing because I do. I'm one of those people that laugh. If when I laugh so hard, sometimes I cry. So maybe I pretend to be laughing and crying because I think that's more acceptable and outside the house like just to be laughing but typically I wouldn't have to be crying so I wouldn't have to cope with that um seven a sequel of a book you loved just came out but you forgot a lot from the prior novel will you reread the book skip the sequel try to find a synopsis on goodreads or crying frustration so if it's a sequel of a book I really like 
if I have time, I will reread it. I will not skip the sequel. Maybe I'll put the sequel off for a bit, but it has to, if it's a book I love, I won't. Um, or I don't really try to find a synopsis in, on Goodreads either, or like crying frustration. But um, typically I'll read the last 50 to uh, 50 pages in the book and that gives me enough up to date. That's usually what I do with the Pretty Little Liar series because it is quite extensive. And sometimes I forget a little bit or I rewatch my discussion part of my review. Or I watch like a discussions part of somebody else's review, for example, of another book. Eight, you do not want anyone, anyone barring your books. How do you politely tell people no when they ask? So if somebody asks to borrow my book and I do not want them to borrow my book, typically I'll use the excuse that I need them on my shelf or I need to use them for something related to booktube because a lot of my friends don't watch my booktube so I can kind of get away with it without hurting their feelings. But typically if somebody ruined my book, I'll just straight up tell them that last time you borrowed it, you weren't gentle so I don't want you borrowing my books because I do pay for them and I don't want somebody else like ruining them. But usually I'll give a second chance and if that person does the same thing again, then I just don't let them borrow it anymore. Um, and usually the only people who borrow are my friends, so I feel safe telling them the truth. Nine, reading ADD. You've picked up and put down five books in the last month. How do you get over your reading slump? So typically how I get over my reading slump is I watch a lot of book hauls and book two videos because watching other people rave about books or even haul books that they're excited about reading gets me back into reading. Um, but sometimes, you know, you just need to put down a book for a few days and not really read anything. But typically I will go to YouTube first. 10. There are so many new books coming out that you're dying to read. How many do you actually buy? So, yeah, I do not have, like, a conventional job. I just dog walk, so I don't make very much money to be splurging on all the books. So I have to be very selective. Um, so typically I'll pick the books I'm dying to read, and the other ones I will save for another time. Um, but I just have to pick the ones that I know that I'm going to either read right away or that I'm dying to have. Um, which is quite selective because usually the ones I'm dying to have are part of series or it's an offer I really like could come out with a book. Um, so that's how I'll kind of choose or if there's a really good deal. So 11, after you bought new books, you can't wait to get to. How long do they sit on your shelf before you get to them? So typically if I buy new books, I try to read most of the ones that I've acquired around the same time because I'm excited to get those. But some of them slip through the cracks and I have them on my shelf for a while. Um, so... They, I don't know, it just depends on what I feel like. If I don't feel like reading that, it's going to sit on my shelf longer. So it's all time-based and how I'm feeling really again. So yes, this has been the Reader's Problems Tag. I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and I tag all you guys to do this if you haven't done it yet. Um, and bye, guys.